Hello, my name is Philip Kanopka. I'm the Ag Agent for Lewis County. Hi, I'm Rebecca Kanopka, the Ag Agent in Carter County, and welcome to Around the Farm. Today we're going to be talking about lice on your cattle. So lice are small, flat-bodied insects that have legs that are adapted for grasping hair. Sucking lice are blood feeders, and biting lice feed by scraping the base of the hair in the skin. Lice eggs, or nits, are attached singly to hairs and will attach in about two weeks. Lice themselves can live a few days without being on the host animal. But why is it important to control lice in your beef herd? Well, let's stop and think about it for a minute. Lice are more prevalent in the wintertime. You couple cold conditions, wet conditions, muddy conditions, and hair falling off in, in bad infestation all add up to added nutrient requirements, taken away from condition and growing calves. Ultimately, at the end of the season, a beef goal's operation is to sell pounds of beef, and it's going to take more nutrients, more inputs, to do that if we have a bad lice infestation. So how do we control our lice? That's an excellent question. First and foremost, I would recommend talking to your local veterinarian. Building a veterinary client-patient relationship is very important. If you run into an emergency, you can fall back on that relationship. And I promise you, dealing with beef cattle, an emergency is going to rise some point in the year. Also, you can contact your county extension office. We have a couple of great pubs for you. Infax 512 just happens to be lice control on beef cattle. Or Infax 11 is insect control on beef cattle which covers more than lice, and it deals with what we're dealing with, how to control it, and some different insecticides we can use. Okay. All right, so there are several different options that you can use for controlling lice. There are pour-ons and sprays, powders and dust, uh, injectables. Um, but one thing that we've got to keep in mind is that we have to vary the mode of action that we're using. Um, we don't want to keep using the same active ingredient over and over because we can build up resistance to that product. So we want to make sure that we are varying those modes of action. That way we get good control when we use the products. So we have a couple of products here that our farmer has chosen to use. And we're not endorsing. These products are criticizing others that we don't have. This is just what the farmer that we're working with today has chose to use on his herd. Some other pieces of equipment you may need or find very valuable is a cattle scale. Uh, these in, uh, pour on dewormers are based off of weight. So you wanna make sure you apply the proper amount. If you under apply, it will not do a good job of control. And ultimately we're selecting for resistance too. So we don't wanna lose the effectiveness of our insecticides. So if you don't have a scale, uh, you can contact us here at the extension office. We do have plans where you can make your own scale at a very reasonable cost to them if, you, if you're a little handyman and uh, want to piddle around with a little project. One other thing that's important is that you make sure that you have some way to keep records. It doesn't have to be complex, but you need to make sure that you're keeping records for your cattle herd as you're applying um, insecticides or other drugs to your herd. You to make sure that you have the date that it was applied, the animal that was treated, and the dosage for that animal because if you're taking that animal to slaughter, you need to know when the withdrawal time is. And speaking of the withdrawal time, always read the label of any insecticide or any pesticide for that matter to make sure that one, you're following the label because it is the law. Two, you wanna see if the pest that you are trying to control is labeled on the label. And then you wanna look at the harvest interval. You wanna make sure that you do not have any residues when you sell the cattle at market, you have to assume that the, the animals that you're marketing are going to enter the food supply chain. This is an extra tool that you can purchase at any feed store when you buy your pour-on insecticide. For the larger jugs, it makes it easier and more efficient of your time with this tool. Also, you may want to have a pair of latex gloves laying around if you're not allergic to latex because it's a good idea to warm the cattle and not yourself. All right, so let's get started. You can monitor for lice as your cattle come up to eat. It's easy to look for the splotches of hair that may be missing. Okay. So we've weighed our cow and she knows, we know that she weighs 980 pounds. 
So we're going to use the guide on the bottle to get the correct dosage. Then it just goes down the length of her back. Going to make sure that you don't get any lesions or um, spots where there's mud or manure on her to, spray, to pour it on. And then since the eggs will hatch in about two weeks, you may need to do a second dosage in about two weeks. After a long, hard day of working cattle, make sure that you properly clean everything up, put everything back in its place so when you need it, you know exactly where it's at. Uh, we'd like to take thank our farmer that allowed us to video his cattle. Um, if you need any other assistance, feel free to contact your local vet or your county extension office. Thanks for watching, and like he said, if you have any questions, just give us a call.